everyone, and welcome to episode three of Controllers Up, Cards Down, the All-Star Gaming Podcast. I am one-fourth of your hosting team this evening, Mr. Scott Crawford, coming to you from Swartz Creek, Michigan. And with me, as always, is the lovely... Heather Powell, coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. Happy to be here and talking about some video game movies and other such things tonight. Yeah, and... Also with me, as always, is the man in the basement. Yes, excellent. <laughs> Mr. I'm Tim, Tim Williams. I'm, yep, that's me <laughs> in your basement. Playing <laughs> magic and Dungeons and Dragons with the cats. <laughs> yep. Just trying to stay uh, off of the same audio channel, too, because if we were too close to each other, that would be a, a nightmare. It's just yes. an excuse <laughs> yes, for would. you to be away from uh, Scott. Oh, yeah. yeah, Scott, it's audio. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. It's not the smell. Nothing at <laughs> yeah, all. Yeah, nothing like that. No, no, no. And we have ourselves a very special guest today. Coming Comes from the NFW podcast, Mr. Willis Wheeler. How are you doing, Willis? I'm doing great. I cannot complain. It's a Monday and I'm not watching Monday Night Raw, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Preach it, brother, on that one. Absolutely. And Willis, you also do Wild was it Wild Man Willis Reviews? Is that what yep. it was called? Are you still oh, doing that? Yeah, on my YouTube channel, I'm still reviewing stuff. I just awesome. recently did Mortal Kombat and I did a review, retro review of Aliens. Oh nice. oh, nice. Awesome. Well, you'll cool. get to talk a lot about one of those films later. But as you know, Willis, you've listened to our show. So we would love to hear about your history with games in general. So walk us through what you played, what you've been playing, what you're up to now. Well, the bull on the bull came part, that didn't work out too well because I was the only child and my mom had to make me win the game every time so I wouldn't cry. <laughs> so, <laughs> That, that was the end of that. I had a whole bunch of board games at home, but I ain't had nobody to play with. I had like <laughs> Mousetrap and Monopoly and stuff. I nice. didn't really start playing Monopoly until I got older with my friends, but it's been mainly video games. Nice. From nice. The, not even the old school Atari joint. I had the old ColecoVision oh, when it wasn't what? even a cartridge. <laughs> it was just the gun and the steering wheel. And it was You're also an black and white. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. amazing. I started off. What was your second system? Where did you the go Atari from there? Atari 2600. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, like, when did you get, like, Nintendo and Sega? Or did you go down that road? Like, what? where did you go from there? I had all of them. You had I all had, of them? Nice. I had nice. got a Commodore 64 first and then had to beg my mom to get me a Nintendo. Luckily, my dad was working at the British Embassy and somebody was selling it because they couldn't take it to England because it wouldn't work. It came oh, okay. with five games and a whole bunch of Nintendo Power um, magazines, and they got for nice. $100. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. I love them Nintendo Power magazines. Those things were great. Yeah. yeah. We should do a review of those on the show if we can find anyone that sells a copy of them. I yeah. had a whole bunch of them, but they down in my mom's house. I don't know if she threw them away or not. Well, we better call her right now, Willis, and see if she has those Nintendo Power <laughs> yeah. magazines. She probably Super did. Important. She probably packed them up. They probably down there in one of them sheds. Probably, right? I was say, I think I might actually still have some old school Game Informer magazines down here too somewhere. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. So did you have a preference, Willis? Were you a Nintendo? Were you a Sega? Did you like PlayStation? Do you like Xbox? I just like video games. You like every <laughs> system. You're not yep. particular. I, and, only thing I don't really care for is that Xbox. Oh, why can why not Xbox? Because every time we cut that damn thing on, it's always updating something and it takes <laughs> forever to play anything on it. So um I got the 360 and, and the Xbox One S. And the Xbox One S is just sitting in the living room collecting dust. And I got a whole <laughs> rack of games for it, too. I just, I don't know. I'd rather just, play my place. You ain't about the Xbox. You're not about the Xbox life. Uh-uh. That's what I'm hearing. No. <laughs> nope. What about, now you've created something pretty special, which I hope you'll share to our page after this episode comes out. You've created your own arcade system. Yeah, I made my own arcade machine. I made a bar top version of it. Instead of going spending all that three or four hundred dollars on them cheap little Walmart joints, they only got three or four games on it. 
I just went on YouTube and learned how to make it. All you gotta do is get a Raspberry Pi four and put it in the system, and then you can buy the kits online to make the arcade. Oh, that's That's awesome! Awesome. How long did it take you, Willis? Well, I had the Raspberry Pi first, so I was testing it out and just using that as a little console system. So when I got some extra money, I was like, let me see if I can make my own arcade. So I looked on Amazon and um, eBay to see anybody selling just the cabinets by itself. And I found a company that sold the whole cabinet by itself. So I bought the cabinet, went to um, Best Buy, got a cheap little um, 19-inch TV and put it in there and got the um, joysticks off of Amazon. And that's it. That is awesome. awesome. That's really <laughs> that is cool. really yeah, that's really freaking cool. Yeah, so I pieced everything together like in a few months. So that's wow. what I had did with mine. So I just went here and there and went to computer center and got like my decals and stuff. And that was it. I was finished by the summertime. I started in like the spring, but then I finally got everything together by the summertime. Yeah, that's freaking sweet. Yeah, I hope you can uh, share some pictures to our page for that because that, that's just awesome. Yeah, I have so put a video. Try to build video, one tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I had put a video on the um, page a long time ago of my of it on there. Oh, that's right, you did. Yeah. yeah. I was so like, I couldn't remember there? if that was on our page or your main page. I couldn't remember. Yeah, it's on. I put it on your page. Well, share right. it again because people will miss it, and I think that once you talk about it on the show, people will clue in and go and look at the page. Because sometimes yeah. people listen to the page and they don't go to the Facebook. Um, and what about? Do you have a PlayStation Five? Yeah, I got a PlayStation Five. I yeah. got it when it first came out. Wow! Pre order, you man. I got a pre order from Sony. They had sent me an email saying if you want to get it, a pre order nice. on this date. And I got it. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's I was, was not paying um GameStop and them all that extra money for no bundle. I just wanted the system to be done with it. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't blame you. And yeah, I was gonna say, and um uh what was it up? Did you ever play Echo the Dolphin? We gotta ask this question to every guest. <laughs> I actually got the Sega C D version here at the house. Oh nice. <laughs> Did you figure out how to beat it? Nope. <laughs> Fucking Echo the Dolphin. Motherfucking nope, my, Echo. It's a pain. That game is a pain in the ass. Right? I'm it feeling just better. makes no sense. What was that, Willis? I understand what's going on, but it makes no sense. The game makes no sense. It doesn't. Like, what are you trying to do really with the Dolphin? <laughs> like, you're just swimming around and doing fucking nothing. It oh, really is I, true. I, I, I know the story to the game. You trying to defeat these aliens to bring back all the sea creatures. That's the plot of the game. Yeah, yeah, totally. I completely forgot about that. It's not like the game that, Scott, you were playing a couple weeks ago about the shark that was getting revenge, right? What was it called? Maneater. Maneater. Like, that seemed like it had more of a plot to it. Oh, it it definitely did. did. (laughs) I didn't beat that twice. Oh, wow. I I beat it on play. PlayStation 4, and then when the upgrade came on PlayStation 5, I played it all over again and beat it on there, too. That game's just so much freaking fun. <laughs> yeah. You know the DLC come out in the summertime. Yes, I cannot wait. I was yeah. like, I need to really start playing more of it, though, because I think I'm only maybe like a third of the way through the game right now. But I also don't I also don't get a chance to play the games as much as mm-hmm. I used to. So I'm just trying... I just kind of nitpick, and I got too many of them playing at the exact same time. Right. <laughs> it kind of bounce back and forth. <laughs> That's funny. No, for sure. Well, I guess our next question for you, Willis, before we move on to the news is we had a big discussion on our first episode. We continued the discussion on our second, which is the development of digital versus physical. Um, Do you prefer to buy physical video games or would you just rather download them? I like physical games because you never know when the rights run out. The only system that makes any sense to buy digital games for is the Switch. Why the Switch? Because it's just a little small handheld joint and the games are only but yay big. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times if you look on the Switch um, electronics store for the download the games, sometimes they be selling the games on there for about $3, $4. Knocked yeah. down from like $15, $20. So 
So that's mm-hmm. the only system I feel like is worth buying the digital games on there. Yeah, but that makes absolute sense because for one, the system's portable, so it just makes it easier not to have like extra games to carry around with you. Yeah, yeah. pocket full of games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like what we did with the Game Boy back in the day, <laughs> right? And then you yeah. would like, didn't they have little carry cases that you could get? You could get that Game Boy backpack. Yep, uh-huh. <laughs> you could carry your games. That that shit was lit. You knew you were balling when you had a Game Boy backpack. Um, yeah, is there anything else you want to share with us, Willis, about the games you're playing or about just you in general before we move on to the news? Well, I actually got the um new R type. They just released that Friday and I ordered it off of Amazon. So mm. I fell in love with playing schmucks again because you don't see them too often. That's the main reason why I made my arcade because a lot of the schmucks are locked on the arcade and they don't really bring them out. So, oh, and uh, is that shoot them ups? Yep. Uh huh. Yep. I was going to say, I, I always forget that term. <laughs> yeah. So, I've been kind of addicted to them right now. And I've been playing the old games. I actually found online the Judge Dread arcade game that was nice. a, it was a, um, actually, it was a prototype that they tested it. And they only made like six levels to it. They put it in the arcade. I personally played it when I was out in Texas. They just had it out at an arcade somewhere. It's a short game. All you're doing is just to beat them up. But it's the same kind of graphics as Mortal Kombat. So it's actual digital people running around and you fighting against them. That's That's awesome. I didn't know there was a Judge Judge Dredd game in the arcades. That's awesome as hell. Yep, so I found that online somewhere. Somebody had it on there because I've been looking for it. One site say they had it. I downloaded it. It didn't work. So I went to this site and they had it and they downloaded it and it worked. I got like all the old arcade games. I got Alien vs. Predator. Nice. Ninja Turtles. Bucky oh. O'Hare. Captain America and Avengers. Spider-Man. I got almost all the beat em ups and all the games that you remember playing at the arcade that you can't play now. I got a lot of the um, Neo Geo games. Mm. Oh, nice. have, uh, the game Double Dragon. It was a Double Dragon with the two yep. brothers. I got and they'd be one, like, <laughs> Yeah, I got one, two, and three. Uh-huh. Nice. Nice. See, they, the thing about it is they want people to buy those arcade systems and they only got a little bit of games on it. Oh, they got the um, Neo Geo system that only has 50 games on there. Pay $400 for it. Mm-hmm. If you don't know how to add extra games on there, you basically short. So that's why I basically made the arcade because I was like, they have them online for free. So might as well take advantage of it because they archive in all the games. I got Atari 2600. I got ColecoVision on there. Got Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Turbo Graphics 16, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Wow, Atari Lynx. That's a shit ton of games, man. Yeah, that's yeah, no really kidding. Cool. <laughs> that's I'm really cool, Willis. Trying to figure out how to get Dreamcast and um, PlayStation One to work on it. I can't get it to work. I know some people know how to do it. Nintendo 64 is funny acting. It stutters a lot. I had a few games on there when I was first fooling with my Raspberry Pi, but I just took them off. Because yeah, of the I, joystick. Oh, yeah. I can imagine that'd be kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah, uh-huh. So that's basically if I didn't want to put a, a, my Raspberry Pi in arcade, I would have used the um, Xbox 360 joystick or PlayStation 3. They work just as good for... um. Nintendo 64 games for the ones that actually work, but it's just too much a hassle, and I'm not that good yet to figure out how to get all that to work. Yeah, still, yeah. Uh, that's a freaking library of games that you have there. That is insane. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, still stuff on yeah. I'm still adding stuff on there. I'm still adding stuff on there. 
<laughs> well, and what are you kidding, Heather? I'm, this weekend, shit, I'm packing up right now. Yeah, he's heading over, Willis. I hope you're ready for a visitor. Um, <laughs> Coach. It's okay. He's had his vaccine. He's safe. He <laughs> I had mine too. <laughs> oh, there you go. We're Perfect. Doing COVID free, COVID free video game night. Well, yeah. Thanks so much, Willis, for sharing that. And we look forward to hearing more from you, of course, from our topics. But you have a okay. real history of video games, so that's really mm-hmm. cool. <laughs> Yeah, I've been excited to have you on the show for a while. So I'm like, yeah, this, this is great. So, Scotty, why don't you tell us what's in the news? All right. So, well, there's actually two news pieces. I told you guys there's only going to be one, but I want to bring up one briefly. But uh, apparently the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 3 stores that I talked about on the last episode are, were shutting down. Well, apparently PlayStation heard the outcry from a lot of the gamers out there. And they have decided to keep the stores open now. So now oh. they are not shutting down or planning to shut down. They're going to keep them running. Good news. Yeah. So I just figured I'd give an update on the last story, from last episode. Um, and then the one news piece I wanted to bring up today is just because, well, this is pretty popular right now. And that is the Mortal Kombat movie from 2021. It apparently has reached, reached 66 million in ticket sales and is just kicking, well, Doing a flawless victory, shall we say, <laughs> at the box office. Mortal Kombat. And Get I know, over here. And I know all four of us have uh, watched it, so I figured we could just kind of talk about our thoughts about it a little bit. And warning, there may be some spoilers. We'll just, uh, we're not going to do a huge deep dive or anything, but figure we just talk our Spoiler thoughts. Spoiler alert. Spoil alert. If yeah, you probably. haven't seen Mortal Kombat, we are probably going to tell you things you don't want to know. So just skip over this section. Scotty yes, will timestamp like- it. Yep, like all the babalities, they're all in the movie. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, how about uh, Heather? How about your thought? Your thoughts first? Oh, please! I'm like the least knowledgeable about Mortal Kombat. I love this movie. I thought it was great. Uh, the 1995 version is okay, but I liked that this was more modernized obviously there's more they can do with technology now reptile looked a lot better now than they did in 1995 yes, yes, right. did. um i didn't mind the cole character i know a lot of people had a beef with him it's funny because i was watching and i'm like well i know there's a lot of versions of mortal Kombat. maybe i just don't know who this guy is you know maybe he came out in like the most recent offering of mortal Kombat, and then i felt a lot better when everyone else was like no no he's not actually a character <laughs> he is now that. yeah i was gonna he say he now. probably will be in the next game <laughs> he will be right um so yeah i enjoyed all the characters i thought the acting yet again for a mortal Kombat movie was fine i absolutely loved the last scene with scorpion and sub-zero yes like the moment i heard get over here i like fucking lost my shit and then i like went back and rewatched it a second time <laughs> Just because I loved that fight scene so much. And I loved how they like did little throwbacks. Like, you know, here we are in the pit. Here we are like in the different areas that you played in the game. I thought the lines like flawless victory were good. I know some oh, yeah. people thought that was cheesy. There's a lot but I think of if you played the game, there. you were like, oh, that's or the the one scene where um the one character, I can't remember what it was, started you start kept using the leg kick. Oh, Luke Kang, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was funny. You know, there was like a little shout out to that person that only uses the one move when you're playing the game. Overall, I can't wait for a sequel. <laughs> Honestly, I will take my money, Mortal Kombat. You have me hook, line, sinker. I don't care how long this shit goes on for. We've managed to make 10 Fast and Furious movies. I'm fine if you make like at least five fucking Mortal Kombat films. <laughs> I think that these are fun. They're entertaining. You can turn your brain off. They're easy to watch. But I'm not a huge video game Um Hmm. I don't know what the word is to say, like that you, that you want everything to be like it was in the video game. Like, I don't care if they take creative liberties. I don't care if it doesn't follow the storyline the way it should or the mythology. I was entertained and that was enough for me. So nice. Yeah. Um, and Tim, how about you? Since you and I watch it together, I'll let you go. Oh yeah. Well, I had a lot of fun with that movie. Uh, kind of went in expecting silly fun and had a bunch of silly fun in it. I, uh, I liked it a lot. The character development didn't need to really be there because you're all kind of half aware of who the people were anyway. So they didn't waste any time on that for the most part and just dove right into good action and just a fun plot. I had a good time with it. Uh, Dug the fatalities. Some of them were pretty cool. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's for sure. And uh, looking forward to the sequel if they make one. Yeah. 
I say like I, I with the way they're with the box office budget, I have a feeling they will. Um, man, Willis, I know you went uh, seen it what twice? You said I've been seen it twice already. Man, I was oh, in the nice. house after I watched it the first time. The second time I was watching it, I was kicking and punching at the TV and everything. <laughs> <laughs> man, that movie was just awesome. I know some people complain about where's the Mortal Kombat tournament in the Mortal Kombat movie. And I'm like, this is the setup for the tournament. Exactly. They explained it and during the movie. A lot of people didn't pay attention to what was going on in the movie. Some people was just huffing and puffing saying, this ain't like the 95 version. Why they got this new guy in here? What's the point? They got all these characters. Why they got a new guy in there? Eventually, we all know Cole is going to show up in the next game. It's just almost like common sense. Yeah. Are you going to be a DLC? They know what they're doing. So. Cheat code, you can unlock them or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just happy that it was nice, bloody, and gory. And it was the Mortal Kombat that we deserve, considering all the other junk that they have on HBO Max, especially... That four-hour Justice League movie. <laughs> you know, and I think it's funny. I I honestly didn't need to see another white guy be the main be the main star. I'm sorry, I didn't right. need to see Johnny Cage. I was fine with. Oh, this guy's a descendant of Scorpion. Like I thought that was a cool idea that he was the bloodline, yeah. and that he brought him back through his blood and. I think his daughter is one day going to be a fighter too. Cole's daughter is one day going to be integrated later on if they continue with the movies. And I think that's cool. I, I think Johnny Cage is great. Don't get me wrong, but he was never a, my favorite character. My favorite characters were definitely Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Oh, Give yeah. me those two all day. They could have a spinoff. I eat that shit up like candy. Love <laughs> it. Um, you know, I like the other characters too, don't get me wrong, but they're definitely my faves. So, yeah. like Johnny Cage, there or not, didn't I didn't fucking care. Like, I'm glad he's gonna be in the sequel, but that didn't matter to me. Yeah, like Same um, here. for me, like it really didn't bother me much, but like I did wish it was Johnny Cage was in the movie just for the fact that if we got him, we would have had all seven of the original fighters from the very first movie or from the very first game. Mm. And that would have just been kind of like a nice little nod just to have all seven of them there. But uh, and plus, just because I know Johnny's just that cocky ass Hollywood star, he would have had some funny lines. But we can wait till the sequel to get well, that. We had Kano for that right. though. Did we? Okay. Did you want two of those kind of personalities competing with each other for chuckle scenes? Oh time? God, Why? no! I was gonna say because I will. I did love Kano, but sometimes it did like get old with a lot of his right. lines. Yeah. But I still <laughs> enjoyed him. But uh, yeah, I and I have to say like that opening was it ten minutes? Oh my God, the fight between. Uh, uh, Sub Zero and Scorpion before they were Sub Zero and Scorpion. I can't remember their actual names at the moment off the top of my head, but just that fight scene between them, like in that garden and everything, oh, just so freaking cool. Yeah, the mm-hmm. scenography was out of this world good. Like it was really well filmed. Yeah, yeah like I agree. And, and yeah, the fatalities were incredible. I loved the look of uh, Goro when they brought him in with the CGI. They did an amazing job. Mm-hmm. Like, the pe- I have heard a lot of people try to compare this to the 95 version, and it's like, all right, guys, come on. Go back, rewatch the 95 version. It's not that good. It's fun, but it's not that good. Like, <laughs> if mean- anyone honestly thinks the 1995 version is a better made movie, it, there's no way you compare a 1995 movie to a 2021. You may like the plot more. Yeah. You may like the story more, but it may not, it's not a better made movie. <laughs> it's member berries. Yes, exactly. Right, That's it's exactly member what it berries, is. right? Like I'll I'll be honest, I'll throw on the original every like every couple of years just for just like some dumb fun and laugh and have fun with it because it's you know it's part of my childhood. But yeah, like I've been I'm a huge fan of the Mortal Kombat franchise, like played all of the games, and yeah, this movie delivered on everything that I wanted, had the awesome kills. Um the arcana arcana part was kind of a bit weird because it made it feel like a, a almost like a superhero origin story but you know what if it's a way to just kind of give the reason for each character to have their special abilities i'm cool with it because yeah like i still had a freaking fun time with this movie it was just so everything i wanted Absolutely, but i yeah 
but yeah, I think all four of us probably recommended then. So <laughs> Oh yeah, and I can't like yet again, sure. I'm so glad they're making a sequel. Like I think that I'll watch, as I said, if you got 10 Fast and Furious movies and I've given up, I can't even follow that franchise anymore. I tried to watch the last one, I didn't get the fuck what was going on, and I've seen all of them. <laughs> And by this point, I'm like, and you know what? Nothing. If those are your jam, hey man, rock on. Like I liked a bunch of them too, but I'm ready for something different. And I really love how they've done this series. I like Sonya a lot in it, like as the female protagonist. I thought she was great. She wasn't over the top. She was just enough. Yeah. Like she was just enough of a feminist badass that it wasn't overwhelming. And yeah, I I, I think they could really make a killing with this. So I hope they continue. Yeah, they absolutely could. And yeah, from what I've heard, the sequel is going to be what focuses on the tournament. And then the movie after that will be like the aftermath of the tournament. So I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with it and like what other characters they will be bringing in because they have a huge roster they can go through. So I'm, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. And I got to <laughs> say, there's also a lot of really freaking cool Easter eggs if you're a big fan of the mo- of the games. So what like, was yeah. your favorite Easter egg, Scott? Oh, just like the fact that they actually brought in Nataro and uh, Riku, like two just like one off characters from like just one of the middle games. I think it was like Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance or Mortal Kombat Armageddon was where they were from. Yeah. And yeah, just the fact that they brought them in. I'm going, well, they went for a deep dive here. That's freaking cool. And then just uh, you'll get like pictures of Nightwolf in the background when the and Sonya Blade's a little uh. Heidi hole in her trailer where all the like she's got the whole freaking thing lined up with the string and everything and you get to see night wolf in the background there and yeah just a lot of like nods to other characters and things like that i really appreciate it awesome and what about you two tim or willis did you guys see any easter eggs that you really stood out to you i saw um katana's um fan in the temple so oh, yeah. probably she gonna come up i like the little poster with Johnny Cage, I seen that yeah. in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> that was cool to see, and they did. I I like the um pictures that they had on there in the temple because they show Shao Kahn and yep. they show um who is it? They show Katana's mom and dad. So that was cool to see too. So. They had a lot of Easter eggs in there. If you ain't pay attention to them, you could miss them because it was blinking and was gone. And then they had nods to some of the newer characters in the newer game as well in there. Um, Kodokan, he's in parts yes. 10 and 11. So that was cool to see the little nods to them. So they got so many characters that they can introduce in the next few movies. That's going to be cool to see how they pull that off. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm really I I'm really looking forward to that. Now I'm just gonna ask one quick question. Uh, well, we didn't see if Tim had an Easter egg. Oh, actually, oh, I'm sorry, Tim. You guys nailed them all. I, I... Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, because I know uh, Willis and I are probably the biggest of the Mortal Kombat gamers. Because uh, Tim, I know you haven't really played all of them like I have. Right? I played a lot on the Genesis in the Super Nintendo back in the day. Three was the two and three were the ones I probably played the most of, and then right. not so much after that. Yeah, because I was gonna ask, uh, see if either of you, any of you, want a want to see a character that hasn't been uh, shown yet, like in the next movie. I was like, for me, I would probably say uh, Kenshi, because he's like the uh, blind uh, katana wielding dude with the uh, telepathic abilities, and he's freaking awesome. Oh, I remember him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. You'll yeah, probably no. make an appearance because that's a pretty badass character. Yeah, I, th- I think yeah. he will at some point. And uh, Heather, do you have any that you would like to see that you can remember off the top of your head? Well, I don't know characters from Mortal Kombat as well as you guys do. Like, I know the popular ones that we've seen. Like, I thought Cole was in one of them. And I had to, like, go and look to be like, did I just miss this? So that tells you that I know, like, very basic bitch characters. But on a separate note, I would love to see a Street Fighter movie done. A redone Street Fighter because I love Chun-Li. And I know it's not Mortal Kombat, but it's a fighting game. It's the same shit. And I played the fuck out of that game. I was, oh, and a crossover? Oh my God, take my money. Take everything. <laughs> like, honestly, I'll be buying fucking posters. I'll go to conventions. <laughs> like, I would love that because my favorite fighting character ever is Chung Lee. Nice. Like, ever. And I would love to have her fight characters from Mortal Kombat. That would be like my fantasy. 
So <laughs> yeah, I don't, I can't think of any characters specifically for Mortal Kombat, but I want to see more video game fighting movies done well and done in like with the 2020 technology and cinematography. Yeah, nobody's going to take a chance, and the companies don't have the backing like Mortal Kombat does because yeah. WB owns the property. Oh, that's no, right. Nobody owns like proper Street Fighter. It's Capcom, and they ain't yeah. going to let nothing up, especially after what happened with the last few movies that came out. It seemed like com- um, video game movies don't have the same clout as comic book movies in a property. Well, maybe Mortal Kombat will change that. If this maybe. becomes a big enough series, maybe that will change. You're right, though. It's a struggle right now. But this isn't a good spot. What did you say, Scott? 65 million or? 66 million in ticket sales. This right? was just so over oh, two weeks. And we're still doing it with COVID. Mm. Not, theaters aren't open everywhere. Yeah. So, like, it's, imagine if this had been, like, quote, unquote, normal times. Like, yeah, and, I don't, and I don't even know if this has made it over to China yet. And that's where, you know, a lot yeah. of money comes from. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. Um, but I was saying, uh, just to ask uh, Tim or Willis, do you, either of you guys have a character you'd like to see in the, in the next movies? For me, I'm looking forward to seeing if they're going to even, they're going to bring in new Cybot because they didn't set yes. that up. Yes, the way they uh, set that up with Sub-Zero. Yep. And hopefully they bring him in there and they bring the second Sub Zero that's his brother. Hopefully oh, they'll about that. pull that out of the hat. I don't need the robots like smoking on him. They could leave that there. And since they had a reptile character in this movie, maybe they'll actually had the reptile in the ninja outfit. Maybe yes. they'll do that. Yeah, that's so what we'll I would see. like to see, like a real ninja reptile. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. I was like, because I did like the reptile they showed, but I would still like the ninja style reptile as well. Um, yeah, so would that be the character you'd like to see then, Tim? Yep. All right. Well, then I guess, yeah, we can uh, jump right into the video game releases and board group board game releases for the month. Um, there's a few video game ones and just a couple board game ones I wanted to bring up. But uh, coming out on the PC on May 4th is Sayri, The Beginning. Uh, the Colonists, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch on May 4th. Skate City, uh, coming out for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X slash S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, PC on May 6th. Uh, the big one probably for this month, Resident Evil Village, coming out PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S, X, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC on May 7th, so just a couple days away. Uh, Hood, Outlaws and Legends, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, May 10th. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Wrath of the Druids, DLC, coming down to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Stadia, PC, on May 13th. Hmm. Uh, Monster Harvest, coming out on PC on May 13th. Before We Leave, coming to PC on May 14th. The Mass Effect Legendary Edition, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, coming out May 14th. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I want to revisit those games. Um, then we got Subnautica on the Nintendo Switch, what? which I was kind of shocked to see, but uh, May 14th. <laughs> um, then Subnautica Below Zero coming to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, May 14th. Uh, Days Gone coming to the PC on May 18th. Snow Runner coming to Nintendo Switch on May 18th. Aerial Knights Never Yield, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, May 19th. Elite Dangerous Odyssey, PC on May 19th. Akiba's Trip, Hellbound and Debriefed, PlayStation 4 and Switch on May 20th. Knockout City, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, May 24th or 21st. Melatopia coming to Switch on May 21st. Rust coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on May 21st. Biomutant, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, May 25th. King of Seas, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, May 25th. Maneater coming to the Nintendo Switch on May 25th, so that's awesome. Uh, Shin Megami Tensai 3 Nocturne HD Remaster. Wow, that's a mouthful. PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, PC, May 25th. Earth Defense Force, World Brothers, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC on May 27th. 
Odd World Collection coming to the Nintendo Switch on May 27th. The Idol Master Starlit Season coming out PlayStation 4, PC on May 27th. And World's End Club coming to Nintendo Switch May 28th. <laughs> and then uh, the three board games I noticed were Masters of the Night, Sword and Sorcery, Ancient Chronicles, and Zombicide, the second edition. Uh, none of those have, like, the site that I was on never gave the actual date in May, but just said coming out in May. Cool. So, yeah, that is our lineup of all the games that are coming out right now. I'm sure I've missed a few because you, you, just so many that come out every freaking month, but, you know. <laughs> um, so that is the end of our introduction to new segments. So we will jump on over to the retro table. And send it over to Party Powell. <laughs> On Video Arcade Top 10 with Nicholas Pickles. Here we go again, and we're ready for game time. Um, so, Willis, welcome to your first episode of Video and Arcade Top 10. Unless, of course, you've heard of this epic Canadian television show before. That was the most spastic thing <laughs> I ever seen in the longest I know. time. Yeah. It was just like bang, 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 <laughs> bang, bang. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> it, that was basically made for attention deficit kids. It was. <laughs> we have a lot of those in Canada. Um, that show <laughs> ran, believe it or not, Willis, for over 20 years. I can um, believe it. Yeah. It, it covered off starting with Nintendo, the original Nintendo, and then ended off at one of the PlayStations. So it, um, though this episode, I, it's hard to find the correct dates. It's episode 763. And this would have been in the summer of 2004 or three. Um, it was hard yeah. to figure out exactly for sure. Yeah, the Nintendo, it, sorry, go ahead, Tim. I think it said 2003 in the episode. Did it say 2003? On, on, like okay. when it, it flashed on screen about the medieval times prize they were giving away. Yeah. And it had, like it said 2000. It said 2000 and like 1990. Yeah. Cause it was like the, the medieval their, times was saying how long they've been around for. It was their anniversary or something. Which is a big thing. It's still there in Toronto. Medieval times is like the shit. It's one of the few Canadian locations that we have. So they use Nintendo Cube here. I'm pretty sure that Video Arcade Top 10 made a deal with the Nintendo Devil because I don't think we've seen them use any other system. The first yeah, episode was, was Nintendo, and then the second was Nintendo, and this is Nintendo. Yeah, you are right, actually. I don't like right? I don't think they ever did show like Xbox or PlayStation at all. Or Sega like, it's all been Nintendo, yeah. Or anything. So the first game was the Polar Express. Did oh, either of you horrible. gentlemen play that game? <laughs> no. no. <I'm... laughs> that looked awful. Like, it looked like the most boring chore. game ever. Like these kids are like, oh yeah, I'm on video or Kate.pen. It's gonna be a really cool ass game. They're like Polar Express. <laughs> <laughs> i swear the guy was like reading from the instruction manual when he was talking about it too yeah. it just sounded like the dry ass text that you would get in that little manual hero yes. boy is the is the hero yeah, hero of this boy adventure. <laughs> i kept <laughs> laughing at that it's so true right and anyway um and then the one thing that stood out to me was that they did have playstation 2 games so this was obviously playstation 2 was out as prizes so you oh, could yeah. either get the Nintendo games or PlayStation 2. The Twister movie, the Twister music <laughs> board game. Did you guys remember that game coming? I did. I remember wanting it, but I never got it. I never I even never knew that seen it before. Yeah, no? I didn't know that existed. Oh, it's just been like a chick game. But I don't know. I would have thought you gentlemen <laughs> would have wanted to get people to play Twister with you. But maybe I'm... I mean. I'm always down to get people to play Twister with me, but like I just never heard of that version. <laughs> now you can't. You'd be like, oh, my back, my knee. Right. <laughs> Fall apart. <laughs> I can't do it like I used to. Uh, and then the second game that they talked about or games that they gave tips on, or I think they played it too, was Sonic. No, they played a fighting Sonic game. Sonic yeah. Adventure 2 for GameCube. Have you guys played that when you were younger? I it looked have like it. a horrible you have it? of Smash Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I got it when I bought a GameCube from the thrift store and it just happened to be in the um this slot when I huh. opened Did it you play up. It? Nope. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that Man, looked kids, that also looked painful to try playing. Like these these poor kids. <laughs> yeah, like it was really like a low energy episode. Like the last one we did before this, they were all like, yeah, fuck yeah, right? Like they were really like Oh yeah, the they games. were playing like WWE Rest, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they were playing like and then like Madden. 
and shit like that. And now they're playing Polar Express and Sonic Adventure 2 or whatever it was. Uh, so the music, Fifi Dobson. Have either of you guys heard of Fifi Dobson? Nope. Nope. Huge nope. Canadian superstar, though. Like Huge, huh? Yeah, no, we were wondering. In Canada, we were wondering, she's big. Yeah. We were wondering what the uh, answer is, though, because they asked... Who is it was the, the song uh, that the video that she was playing. Exactly. Okay, it, was, yep. it was literally the song she just well, did. Because yeah. yeah. like Tim and I... Yeah, Tim and I were, for the answer? <laughs> well, Tim and, well, Tim and I were discussing it because it was, uh, what was it, uh, Michael Boublier or whatever his name is and uh, Alanis Morris that both had songs called Everything as well. So I was like, well, that's three Canadian singers. Which one was it? <laughs> yeah, but it was the video they were then, yeah, showing we, at the same yeah. time. Yeah, I, they, they literally show it right before. Yeah, I was like, this I is a show for children. <laughs> But I, I, I realized that on the next time when they asked the question about the movie. <laughs> In all fairness, this is the most Canadian thing. Though they had Usher the week before. They were doing sure. Usher trivia. So they went back to Fifi Dothan. We really did come on the low, the low grade episode. <laughs> and then the movie or so. And then they talked about tips for Banjo Kasui's Grunty's Revenge. Yes. Did you guys ever play that one? Nope. Uh, no, I've played one of the Banjo Kazooie's, but I don't think it was that one. What about you, Willis? That was the Game Gear, um, Game Boy version. Yes, the Game Boy version. I had the original one on, on um, Nintendo 64, but all it was was a collect-a-thon. After a while, it just got annoying, so I just stopped playing it. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I think these kids felt the same way, too. And then, finally, the second game was, this is where you felt it was a knockoff of Smash Brothers, the Sonic fighters where it was basically sonic the hedgehog fighting other characters from sonic the hedgehog <laughs> that i had no idea yes. were even in sonic half of them right? yeah, i recognized yeah. tails and knuckles and then i was like who who are these other ones <laughs> yeah Did that you ever was play on, this game on was? the sonic gems collection i got out off of the game when i bought the game cube from the thrift store that whole disc it's all it is using the virtual fighter engine on the game Oh. And it doesn't really, you don't really do any moves, but really just kick and punch. That's about it. You know, That's- interesting because the original Sonic, I fucking love Sonic the Hedgehog game. I thought it was, and you could make him spin real fast. Yeah. And then he kind of grew into this other, like, I don't know, this icon that wasn't really an icon. And they kind of just destroyed him with these games. But uh, yeah, the future games of Sonic have not been good. No, right? And though I do remember the Sonic Fighter for GameCube. I don't remember a lot of GameCube games, but I do remember that one coming out. Um, and then finally, the movie time was Monsters, Inc. Uh, was Good the movie, movie that they were yeah, yeah. that they were pushing to the young kids. And yet again, they had a website, though, in this version. This is the first time we watched Video Arcade Top 10, and they've been pushing their website, but you still had to mail in a postcard <laughs> yeah. to win anything. <laughs> um, but they did have the Nintendo bus. The Nintendo three, um, oh yeah, the bus. traveling bus. Yeah, <laughs> they don't have that anymore. Game cubes are a little bit more expensive. They can't be rolling around on a bus anywhere. So, I'm any final thoughts, Willis, on video arcade top ten? I go watch some more in- episodes just to see what they're talking about. But man, of all systems to be promoting the Game Cube, that wasn't one of the best systems yet. No, I liked it. The best thing on there is once you had a Game Boy player and you could play the Game Boy games on the TV until you lost the disc and that was the end of that. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's because they made a promotional deal with Nintendo. And I can yeah. just imagine, though, how many systems Nintendo sold off of... There's a reason why they kept coming back with all their systems. They were obviously yeah. increasing their sales, right? Well, and so- also, Nintendo is, like, the more notorious... Well, more well-known company that does promote a lot of kids games that's true i mean they do have some of their violent games now but like back then they like i mean heck even the mortal Kombat, the first couple of mortal Kombat games didn't have blood in them in the nintendo yeah yeah that's true right so thanks for coming to retro table and we'll see what we bring from video and arcade top 10 next time who knows maybe we'll go real back in time we'll go back to the early episodes of video arcade oh, top yeah. 10. <laughs> see what we'll see what shit they were playing back then that should be pretty probably the same song throughout the entire episode <laughs> yeah it is time. well they didn't you know <laughs> they were like why 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 fix something that's working? People keep showing up. And <laughs> Why fix something that's working? <laughs> like it was probably the most popular Canadian television show at one time. It just it was huge. So yeah, thanks I for totally watching, everyone. That.
Yeah, I'll say, well, no, and I'll definitely uh, share the link to the episode in our Facebook page once I release this episode as well, too. So in case you all want to see the spasticness of this crazy episode. And learn who Fifi Dobson is. Uh, My Canadian brothers and sisters will know who she is because she's quite a good singer. But then again, you guys are from Michigan. I don't expect you to know anything. So wow. Wow. You know, you just listen to what do you listen to? Scott, over and over again, Black Guardian. That's it. (sighs) Here we go again. <laughs> Blind Guardian. <laughs> hey, I'll, I, I've been listening to something that's more fitting of video game stuff now, and that's Gunship. So you shushed. Oh, okay. Two bands. Two bands, Scott. Yeah, my bad. Sorry, <laughs> Scott. I apologize. Yeah. Uh, so before I get, keep getting picked on, I'll roll on over to our third segment, which is uh, pretty much what we've been playing or our review of a certain game. We're each bringing a game to discuss and... Uh, Heather, how about you go first? Oh, okay. I'm actually going to talk about a, a board game that Scott gave me a year ago. I've been wanting to talk about it, but I've been playing some other stuff. But it's one of my favorite Trivial Pursuit games that I've ever played. And I'm also Yay. a big horror movie fan. So it's called Trivial Pursuit Horror Movie Edition. And I got two horror games last year. I got this other card set game and I got this game. And let me tell you, this game is more legit if you are a true horror movie fan. Yes. Like the other one was like, who wears a mask in the Halloween movies? <laughs> or was like something like, who's the killer jaw in Child's Play? Like it was pretty ridiculous. Where these questions would be like, exactly in what scene of The Exorcist did Linda Blair say? Like it was it's a much more detailed questions. So the categories are broken into the following. Monsters, uh gore slash disturbing psychological paranormal slasher and international and it's over a hundred years of filming that films that they have included in this trivia and it's a lot of fun like if you're a horror movie fan and you want to be challenged with other horror movie players and even if you don't know people that in your like immediate circle if you just have friends online that like horror you can play this game online we played it on go- online tons of times yeah. now mind you scott and i both have a copy of the game so it does make it a little bit easier but you can do teams and you can take turns asking each other's questions and it's a lot of fun and the game is only 24.99 so but i will come with a warning that you do have to play this game with people who do truly watch a variety of horror movies like i'm not talking about the people who once a year go to the movie theater and watch Halloween because it came out and they want to watch the entire series because they hear it's trendy or they only watch Blumhouse films. Like you really have (laughs) to play this trivial game, trivia pursuit game with people who like horror, have watched a variety of horror for them to really enjoy it. I did try playing it with my friends who really kind of like fair weather horror fans and they they played it with me to be nice but it was like how i was playing munchkins at one time yeah <laughs> i was doing it to be nice not because i was having a good time so it's 24.99 hey, munchkin is awesome munchkin is, it awesome. is it just wasn't it just wasn't for me yeah so the game is 24.99 on amazon but i'm sure you could get it cheaper in the united states that's the canadian price so i recommend checking it out and ordering it if you're a big horror movie fan yeah, I, and I can uh, agree too, like, because that, that's just a very fun game. And it is, it's challenging even for the big, uh, biggest horror nerd out there. So it's a lot of fun. Um, Tim, how about you? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about this game that I've been waiting for for a long time that just came out recently. It's the sequel to 2004's Evil Genius. It's called Evil Genius 2. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been really waiting for this one. There was a lot of hype around it. Uh, and the game is, it's its okay. The thing is, I had just recently played the first one not that long ago, and there's a lot of stuff that they left out and then almost simplified it. I don't know if that's what they were trying to do was target like a completely different audience, but the game lost a lot of its charm. Uh, if you've never played the first one, it's awesome. I recommend trying it out because it's a silly little uh, base builder where you're an evil genius bent on world domination and you got to launch like uh, uh, evil plots to earn money and, and that kind of stuff it's a little micromanaging base game but the the older one just had so much cooler things you could do with it so i don't know maybe go back and try that one that's <laughs> <laughs> that'd be my recommendation with that all in all i was kind of disappointed that's that's what i get for getting hyped up about something though 
Yeah, sometimes the hype can just kind of lead you to to disappointment if you hype it up too much. And if come to find out it was a different team, so that's probably a big part of it. Like a completely yeah. different company Perfect. bought the rights to it and then tried to make it. Yeah, that's a shame. I was like, because I know you love the first one. Um, Willis, how about you? Um, uh, I lost the. <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, the, one of the games that we're reviewing. Yeah, like, what uh, game our... did you want to bring to the table? What game I want to bring to the table? I just got finished playing Ultimate Mortal Kombat on my arcade machine. Yes. <laughs> oh, snap, snap, snap. I I just realized how hard a game is, especially when you're playing it on a joystick compared to when you're playing it with the controller because the way you input the moves feel kind of smoother on the, on the actual controller mm-hmm. than you playing it on the joystick because of the way the controller is made where you point in the directions to do the fatalities, it's more precise on the joystick than it is at the on the arcade machine compared to you using the controller. It's more easier to pull off the moves. I feel like that it's easier to pull off the moves with the joystick on the video game system than it is on the arcade machine. Nice. Yeah. I... That game, I, that was pretty much my childhood playing Ultimate Mortal Kombat. Oh, was it Ultimate Mortal Kombat three, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh man, I, I knew every fatality, babality, animality, brutality, friendship. I did them all. I loved them. I loved that game. Like me and my friends would play that like hours and hours and hours on end. <laughs> what was your favorite oh. character, Scotty? Uh, Scorpion. Scorpion yeah. was always my hands down favorite. Get over here. And I mean, it's just, he's a ninja from hell. I mean, that's just awesome. And he summons like a skeleton hand and just pulls people down. It just, he's just someone you could relate to, you know? Exactly. <laughs> regular old guy. He's a regular I, old guy. I too have a skull underneath my flesh. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, <"Blah." laughs> <laughs> Oh, but yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that, I love that freaking game, though. Um, yeah. So. It still holds up. It still looks good as old as the game is because of the way they made the graphics since it's digital characters on the screen. It it still aged pretty well, so that's a blessing. And the controls are still fun to play with, but playing on the actual, like I said, actual arcade machine, it's a whole different ball game than using like a PlayStation joystick or Xbox joystick. It's two different, completely different games all together, the way the controls handle. Yeah, I I can imagine that would be a drastic change from what you're used to because I I played it a few times at the arcade, but yeah, I don't think I ever tried pulling off the fatalities or anything like that. I was just button mashing. <laughs> yeah. You're just the doing the leg sweep over and over again. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was Liu Kang. <laughs> yeah. 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 The only um fatality I can do on the arcade machine is sub zeros, and I can't even get that to work half the time. Because oh, I think it's like I think it's like block, 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 run, block, block, or something like that. So I just keep on pushing the button. If it come up, if it don't, if it do, it do. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. I was like, yeah, like. I, yeah, because I think I did play. I played that at a Huckleberry Junction here in Michigan. <laughs> that was like, and I used to like show off to the kids because I had like the strategy guide full of all the fatalities and stuff. I'm like, yeah, and I brought it and put it in front of the system. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I guess I will jump into what I brought, which is going to be kind of more of a review because I really haven't played these like the way they're presented yet. But, uh, the Magic the Gathering Strixhaven Commander 2021 Precon decks have been released, and there are uh, five different sets. Um, each one represents a different school or different college in Strixhaven, which is kind of as a wizard college realm, because each time they go to a new set, it's a different plane or different realm, different world. This time, it's kind of Harry Potter themed. It's like, hmm. col- like just magic colleges. 
and uh, it's five of the two color pairings. So uh, I got I brought all the boxes up here with me, but we got Prismari Performance, which is the blue and red. Uh, they are nice the art students, uh, and they pretty much excel and just like burn spells and counter magic and all that. <laughs> That's cool. Then I got the Quandrix, uh, the Quandrix College, which this deck was uh, Quantum Quandrix. And they're like the mathematicians and the colors are the uh, blue and green. So like mathematicians and big monsters. Then there is the red and white commander deck, Lorehold Legacies, which is all about history. So they are explorers that go and find artifacts. So a lot of artifact cards. And then we got the Silver Quill Statement. And this is the college Silver Quill, Silver Quill which is black and white. And they are like poets and wordsmiths. And then we have the Witherbloom Witchcraft, which is all about life and death. And it's black and green. And I have to say, I've been collecting a lot of these commander precons for a while. And um, I'll say what's in the boxes. What comes in the box is a 100-card deck with one, uh, two foil cards. One of the foil cards is your commander. The other foil card is a secondary commander that you can switch between if you want. And then it comes with a deck box, a life counter, and a few, and like a couple double-sided tokens. And, but yeah, out of all these that I've collected over the years, I would probably say this is one of the best commander sets that I have seen for new and old players because you can pretty much just buy this and play these, and they're actually pretty good decks just from what I was look, looking through the cards. I can tell, like, they actually put some thought into this, and actually, like, the cards work really well together. So if you're brand new to the game, this is an excellent way to, like, get yourself started and get some of the uh, the staples for Commander, like the Soul Rings and all that stuff. And honestly, these are very valuable, too. Like, um, these go for about 35 to $37 right now, a deck. And the Lorehold Legacies, the red and white one that I was talking about with the artifacts, in that deck alone, there is over $145 in value of cards. Wow. that's a, How much did it cost you, Scotty? Uh, for the whole thing, for all five, it was $164 on Amazon pre-ordered. And so okay. it came up to about $38, $39 total each. Well, it's not bad. And, like, it sounds like it's something. Well, and you really like magic. So you're going to, yeah. this will obviously add to the game and add to the variety of what you can do. Are you going to share your cards with Tim or no? Oh, oh. no need. I'll get my own. Yeah, oh, he's already playing. Right. This, is, this is good right. value for sure. Even if you've never played the game and you're thinking of getting into it, great starting point. Or if you're a seasoned player, there's so much good stuff in there. It's all worth having. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. And they even print, like, I think it was 15 to 17 new cards that only come in these decks. So for older players, it gives them a reason to want to buy them to get those cards in their collection. And yeah, most of these decks, like I said, they're already good to start off to play. Like you just leave them up and play with friends and you can just, uh, if you wanted to make it competitive, most of these decks, you only need to spend 15, 20 bucks on other cards and just switch out some of the not so great cards. And you have yourself a competitive deck that can play with like higher tier decks. And yeah, this is like, like I said, I've, I've been playing magic for, I don't know, for about 15, 16 years, like regularly, probably. And yeah, the commander set, I think started coming out in 2011 and I got about eight of those different commander sets. And this is by far the best one that I've seen. That's awesome. Nice to hear. Yeah. I, I had to bring that and I figured like, you know what? It's about time I bring some magic. <laughs> well, we have a variety. We had an old school Mortal Kombat game. We had Tim's current video game. And then my board game and your magic. Yeah, it was a nice round, uh, nice rounded out uh, reviews here today. And we didn't even plan that. That just happened naturally. We're so good that it just happened naturally. Yes, we just flow well we together. We flow so well, that's why. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so... That will be the end of our episode. Uh, and I just want to say thank you very much to our guest, Willis, for joining us. Yeah, um, thanks, man, for sure. You are just someone that I've always like loved talking to about video games whenever I get a chance to. And yeah, I'm so happy to have you on the show. And please plug anything that you do, podcast, YouTube, whatever you got going. Go ahead. Okay. And I got my YouTube page, Wildman Willis Reviews. I got, I have video game reviews on there. 
But since PlayStation, I don't think PlayStation 5 could download the videos on the YouTube anymore. I haven't tried it. And YouTube's um, studio maker is not that good anymore like it used to be. The way you used to edit stuff is not as good as it used to be. So I gave up putting video game reviews on there. But I still do my toy reviews, my wrestling reviews, and my movie reviews on there. So you check that out. And of course, my knucklehead crew on NFW Podcast. We doing pretty well on there. And we're also, I'm also on, is it really that bad? Yep. With Nudie, we we do a couple shows here and there. And that's about it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I used to be a part of, uh, is it really that bad until my schedule just kind of conflicted with uh, everybody else's recording schedule. So I'm hoping to get back on that show because that was fun. Yeah. And Willis, we love your energy. I, I started when I started podcasting, you were always so nice to me. Um, I try. When I went on NFW, you were always, I always felt better if you were on when <laughs> I was coming on because you were just so nice and easygoing and always made me feel welcome. And you just have such an energy to you. So it was just a pleasure working with you again, but having you on where you could really showcase all your knowledge because, yep. you know, we went even into your toys. I'm amazed at the transformer collection you have, everything else that you have, like, you're just kind of a really cool dude. So check out Willis's reviews because it's just a fun time. You want to go down memory lane or you just want to see what's out there now, toy wise, because toys are cool. People who like, I don't know, shit on toys. You're you're a loser because Transformers <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, and shit is cool. Like yeah. wrestling's cool. That stuff is cool. It's it's fun. It's fantasy. And I think that um you do a great job of sharing that and you're unapologetic about it. So yeah. Unless when you talk about wrestling, unless if you talk about buckethead ass Roman Reigns, which yeah, Roman Reigns is he's the uh, best. He's the best. He's gonna save WWE. <laughs> We all know uh, that, right? Uh, <laughs> let's not go down that road. Oh, boy. Let's not go down that road. We don't want to go down that road. One day we'll do a wrestling. I know Nudie used to do his wrestling podcast. He hasn't done that in a little while. He he, um, he says wrestling is just too horrible to even try talk to about. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Well, you know, he's not wrong. So <laughs> That is pretty fair statement right, right there. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah, so I guess anything else you want to add, Scott or Tim, before we close it out? Oh, yeah. Tim, is there anything you want to shout out? I'll say it. No. It's <laughs> <Other than laughs> like, I you can that. find me in Scott's basement. <laughs> yeah, I missed, I missed the last episode, but uh, glad to be back sitting in on this one again. Uh, really nice meeting you, Willis, man. It was cool. Nice meeting you, too. Yeah. Awesome. Right. So, Scotty, do you want to shout out our podcast and then I'll see us out? Yeah, so you can... Uh, find us on the friday nightmares podcast where we are under the kill the cast banner on the legion podcast network where you'll be finding this show as well because we are proud members of the legion podcast family um hit we subscribe are, today yes i'll hit subscribe like share everything you can to support and also uh we also do a once a month uh show with uh the legion patreon account where we are doing like lists movie reviews commentaries just something we wouldn't normally do on our main show and right now we are releasing it oh for a week on patreon and then releasing it to the rest of the listeners out there but eventually we will not be doing that and it will be just patreon exclusive com completely but it's only three dollars a month so it's not hurting the bank but yep yeah, you know if you have the money and want to support the network please do please join us at the legion pot legion patreon page and we are also on It's Not Horror. Okay. okay. <laughs> Where we uh, do commentary <laughs> over something that is not horror related and have just a great time. Not really commentating on the movie specifically, but we have a blast. We just keep talking. <laughs> if you like yes. NFW, you'll like It's Not Horror. Okay. Yeah, Basically. exactly. Um, and you can also find me on the Slumber Party Massacre podcast, which is on the Dark Discussions Network with Miss Lacey Lou, Carly, and Rebecca, uh, the ladies of horror. And with that, we're going to have our controllers down, cards up, power down, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Later. Bye. See ya.